Now that I'm kind of done with my second go through on the uh, Dynatrack axle up build, I'll show you some things that I'm not really happy with. Um, first thing is, is well, this has got some torque to it. There's there's a tight spot there, so it kind of rolls easy, and then bam, there's this little tight spot hits. Now, I suspect that that's because I may have over torqued uh, one of the bearings in my earlier setups, and so I'm hoping. And when I change out to the real bearings, that that goes away, and I'll, I'll let you know at the end of this video. I think I've got my uh, pinion depth about where it needs to be. Uh, that part of the pattern looks good. I need to shim uh, the ring gear over a, a little bit closer to the pinion to decrease my backlash from ten thousandths to getting down closer to six one thousandths, or six or seven thousandths, and uh, hopefully that'll. Uh, That'll make my pattern just about perfect. Um, so I still have to take it apart, uh, take off all of my um, setup bearings and or uh, cones that I, I put together. Uh, I need to drill the hole for the ARB into the housing. Um, and got to do a couple more little uh, little things, torque the, uh, when, I, when I put it together for the final time, uh, make sure I get this uh, pinion nut torque down and I get that to the correct um, 14 or 18 foot or inch pounds of turning and I don't want to I want to see that little uh, hitch that's in there go away but other than that it's going pretty good so for today I'm gonna call it a day and I'm gonna tear it apart one more time uh, probably put it together one more time and then we will uh, we'll be ready to call that good and move on to the next part of the actual buildup thanks much I do want to Say thanks to this uh, massive uh, for their tool. They got this cool little thing that you can put in there. You can use it to either take drive the yoke off if you need to by putting it in and spinning it, or uh, you can use it just as this is a good place to put the nut when you're uh, testing at inch pounds. I don't have the right inch pound torque wrench right now to do that, so uh, that's one thing. Okay, so now it's time the time, and we'll summarize. I got to take it apart again. Uh, I need to move the ring and pinion over this way to decrease my backlash. It was a little bit over the, the spec of like, I think they wanted uh, around 6 or 8. It was closer to 12, so I have to move this over. I just need to put a small shim on this side. The other thing I want to check while I'm taking this apart is, you know, do I really have the, um, the, the, the case in here tight enough? You know, if it just pulls right out, it's probably an indication I didn't get enough shims on either side to uh, make sure it's properly seated. But if it's a little bit tough pulling out, it means I'm probably pretty close to where I need to be. So I'm gonna kinda grab it. I don't know, I can tell you it's too easy. That's coming out too easy. So I need more shims. <laughs> I can tell you that. So, you know, I gotta, yeah. first I gotta catch all this. Oh, and set this down. Yeah. Not lose the shims I had on this side. And then I'm gonna carry my, take my carrier up here onto the bench. Set it down. So yeah, I clearly didn't have enough total shims in there, but I'm pretty close where I need to be with with my backlash. So I'm gonna get my cup out of there. Oh, like this that. is the shim stack that I had on the other side. I always and thought when you did something like that, you put it together and drove it, and if if it something fell apart, then you took it apart to see what part didn't work. You know, Dad, that's a that's a good good advice for the rest of the Jeepers out there who are going to be watching this this video, uh, and that's how a lot of them that's how a lot of us uh, end up with broken parts, and have ended up with broken parts. So remember, you're on on camera, so <laughs> we're having fun. So now I've taken it out. Um, now, uh, did you actually break some parts in this? Okay, let me turn the video off. So now I've. Uh, Tapped my uh, real no kidding bearing in, and it's pressed in. I, I used this piece of aluminum I had, and it was fits perfect right around the circumference. So I was driving with a softer piece of metal on the hardened piece, and kind of I, I used my little torch just not to heat up, you know, just to warm up the housing around there to make it expand a little bit. And then tapped it in. Some people will freeze these bearings. Okay, well, uh, pressed the bearing onto the uh, pinion, uh, placed it in the housing, got the new.
permanent cup there. Now, here's my shim stack. I'm just going to determine um, my pinion preload, my print and bearings preload. So I took the smallest shim out of there I could because I had a little bit of preload, but not quite what I wanted. Or not quite the 12 or 14 pounds for new bearings. So I'm not going to press the new bearing on yet, which I have, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my setup bearing. Okay, so now what we're trying to do is um, really fine tune the, the preload on the bearings. So what I'm using, use my little massive tool. Well, I put this nut in there, and I can put that in the middle, or I mean, I do this way better. It sits in there, and so what they tell you is that turning should be for new bearing between 20 and 40. Now I can tell you right now that it's not over 40. Because I can feel the click, you know, I kind of feel when it clicks. Now I can adjust this tool back down to 20. Okay, there we go. Back down to 20. Let's see if it clicks in. Okay, and that's of course not half as much, but still, even at oops, put on the seven. Even at 20, I'm not clicking. So I know that I need to take a shim out and see if I can get in that range. Okay, so since I'm trying to be careful not to uh, not to crush my bearings and to get everything set up right, I took the thinnest shim out of the stack. It was about a 15,000 shim. I'm gonna put my pinion back in. Put my shims back in. Put my setup bearing back on top of the shims. Don't forget my thrust washer. My flange on there. And oh, my washer. And I'm going to go ahead and spin my nut on again. And I'm going to go ahead and torque this bad boy down. Watch it watch kind of get a sense of kind of how tight I'm working this down to really make sure we're good and as I've talked about before you know, I'm not terribly worried about the depth up here because that is set by how many shims are in there and pretty much no matter how tight I tighten this I'm not going to be able to significantly change uh, what the pinion depth is and I think it's really close to being right quarter inch wrenches you can use half inch it's just oh let's face it I'm a little bit older I'm stronger than I used to be so oh. I use big wrenches all right so now let's take that out and let's go ahead and flip my differential back up boy that's that's tight oh, that is tight Okay, I want to make a little video help you understand just how much fun it is to get this uh, preload right. And I got this stack of shims on here and I've been adding shims and taking shims off and using a little measurement gauge here to see how many thousands I'm, I'm taking off or removing it. And I got to the point where, you know, I was like, uh, one shim was not to preload, and the next shim uh, it was too much preload. So this last one, it was uh, a little bit too tight. And so the preload was a little bit high. So I kind of, what I did here, um, so what I did was, I had already put this one on. I had found one, this one was actually 22 thousandths thick, I measured in a couple of spots. So this was my thicker one. And I said, I need one that's just a few thousandths less. And so as I'm going through this, I, I looked at that and I turned it and I said, well, okay, that one is 
18 thousandths. So that's a difference of about four one thousandths, which is, which is pretty small. But uh, hoping that will start to get me in the ballpark because I was, was over my preload. So now I'm taking this is my 18 thousandths. And now I'm adding my 22 thousandths. I was going to add four one thousandths. And uh, that's the, I mean, that's really how close you got to be to get the right preload um, while you're stacking these shims. Okay, so I finally stacked enough shims and took it apart, put it back together enough times where I can, and this isn't the best way to do it, but what I'm doing is sort of an upper and lower range, so I can feel as I'm spinning this, that this uh, at 20 inch pounds, that it's clicking, I can feel it clicking. And there it goes, and you know, so I am above 20 foot pounds, and then if I adjust my torque wrench up here, to 40 inch pounds and so the range they want you in is between 20 and 40 and I can tell you it's not it's not clicking at 40 I have to hold it and you can see so I know I'm not over 40 which is good I know I'm kind of you know I, as I'm spinning it around I guess I could use trying to use this little nut. I could also use one of these, which is a little different, but you can tell that at 40, nope, it's not above 40. Nice and smooth. And like I said, when I adjust it down to 20, it's, it's clicking over that. So I'm, so I'm not over 40. Um, I am over 20, so I'm in that right range, and I'm going to call that good uh, for pinion preload. Okay, now I'm doing kind of final installation. So I've added a extra thousand shim there and I've installed these little um, seals for the ARB in there that's one of the last things you do and you're gonna put that bad boy on there and uh, real gently so I'm not gonna to film this but I'm gonna take my time and get that on there just right and I'm gonna drop that housing that ARB into the housing okay so we're getting closer to final setup what I'm doing now is just checking how much play I have on this. So when you, I use the spreader to open this up and I put in the same shim pack that I had before. And that kind of put me where I was. I also know that I needed to move this over because my backlash was a little bit high. So I put a really thin, I think it was a three or a couple thousandths shim uh, in here, to slide this over. What I want to determine is kind of how much total play do I still have because you got to get all the play out of it or your or your um, backlash reading isn't quite right. So what I've done is I've put it in here. I've, I've taken all the tension off the uh, case spreader and I'm looking at this and, and I've, I've determined that this 0 0.006 inches is about how much space I have that I can slide another small shim in there. So what I'm going to do is to try to keep everything even and spread the case open again and I'm going to drop oh about a 7,000 shim on both sides to keep it even and that ought to really uh, set my preload and uh, ensure that my uh, pinion, that my, that my ring and pinion here is running true and consistent with the gears. And I'm going to do a final gear check and if it looks good uh, I'll do my final setup, which really would only include just um, taking the back off, putting the uh, pinion on, uh, the, the final pinion bearing on, and kind of button it up. I've already put the little, uh, there are two little seals that go inside here in the ARB. So I'm hoping I don't have to take it out again, um, but if I do, I will, and that's where we're at now. Okay, so... I actually decided to do something that's a little bit different. I went ahead and checked my backlash here um, before. I've got the pinion fixed right now. I'm just checking my backlash real quick um, before I put the shims in. Because what I'm seeing is my backlash did go down. I could have put that sh extra shim in. But it's still right on kind of the high range. And I wouldn't mind if it went down you know, another couple thousands. So what I'm going to do is when I spread this, I'm going to put a little bit thicker shim on this side to push this over. And I think that might 
take a couple of thousandths off um, my backlash when I uh, when I check it again, and that might be get me right to the final setup I'm looking for. Okay, well, now I have spread the case open. Uh, I dropped a five one thousand shim on this side. I take the whole thing out and take these shims out on this side. Those five one thousand shims are so small. I can still feel I have a little bit of play in my uh, backlash, and I can also tell you that it's nice and tight in there, and I would have to pry it out now, which means I probably am pretty close to where you want to be um, with the preload on these bearings. Everything still turns nice and good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this up by uh, putting the bearing caps on, and then we're going to do a final check on the um, backlash once I get that set. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some put some more marking compound on. Check my pattern one more time. Okay, well, now I've torqued my uh, caps down to about 50 foot-pounds. I'm going to have to put a Loctite on them, I think, for the final. And I'm just kind of checking my backlash, and there it is, right about seven and a half or eight. And that is right about where you want it to be. So, so far we're looking really good. Uh, my backlash looks good. Now we're going to do the final pattern. Hopefully if that looks good, we are almost done. Okay, and now Kyle's helping me out and we're marking the ring pin. Put, put marking paint on it in four different places around the ring and pin to make sure it was even. So Kyle's going to start spinning it. I'm going to put a little pressure so the marking goes good. Go ahead and go, Kyle. I'm going to jam this piece of wood in there. Kind of, there we go. Puts a little resistance so your marks are good. And we're going to go around three or four times. And then we're going to check how the, uh, the marks look. That's, that's good. All right. Okay, so um, checking the... Uh, Checking the pattern on these teeth, and this is the coast side. Thank you, Mr. Billa Vista and Dana 60 Bible. That guy, I learned so much from him off the internet. But to me, that looks pretty good. It's in the middle. It's not off on either side. It's not too far up. It's not too far down. And that's the coast side. Now I'm going to look at another place because I did put marking gear. So this would be the drive side of the teeth. And again, you see, yeah, it's not going off. Uh, off the reservation, they appear to be pretty close, centered, middle, left to right. Um, if you were super picky, you might say that's a little bit too far to the inside. But, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm going to call that good. That, that certainly fits in uh, what I would call an acceptable drive pattern. There's a few more things left to do uh, to finish this installation up. But ultimately, um, I think that's where uh, I wanted to end up.